Deputy Thomas Pringle, Thanks. on behalf of the Independence for Change. <clears throat> Thanks very much, Jan Corla. And if I could, just on behalf of the Independence for Change group, and express our sympathies to the people of Turkey um, after the horrific uh, terrorist attack at uh, Istanbul Airport overnight. Um, Tanisha, this week's European Council summit has been, as we know, dominated by the fallout from the Brexit vote. But there are also very, uh, were also very important issues being discussed there that I believe also contributed to the vote result in the UK for many people. That is the ongoing militarisation of the European Union, something that it seems your government are happy to, happy to participate in, despite the fact that the majority of Irish people, when asked, support the protection of our neutrality in our constitution. But then you wouldn't dare ask them officially because you would not get the answer that you would like. The Council has not only been attended by our Tisha Gendi Kenny, but also the Secretary General of NATO, Jen Stolenberg, to receive the European Global Strategy on Foreign and Security Policy from the High Representative Federica Mogherini. The strategy says that Europeans must be better equipped, trained and organised to act auto autonomously if and when necessary, and it goes on to say that we must develop the capacity for rapid response also by tackling the procedural, financial and political obstacles which pre prevent the deployment of the battle groups, hamper fourth generation and reduce the effectiveness of military operations. According to Mogherini, defence cooperation must become the norm within Europe. The document stops short of the creation of a European army, but says that the EU should systematically encourage defence cooperation and strive to create a solid European defence industry. This document comes very quickly, Tanishta, after NATO played war games in Poland, modelling, modelling an attack on Russia that even included potential nuclear strikes, as, as has, some have reported. It is intended as well, Tanishta, that in the coming days that the President of the European Council and NATO will sign a pact in Warsaw, Warsaw at the weekend. That is a pact that they will be signing on our behalf, Tanishta. So, Thomas, I would like to ask you, how will your government protect our neutrality as, a, as a, the majority of the Irish people want? And also, if the Taoiseach remained at the Council, European Council meeting while they met with the, the Secretary General of NATO, and if so, why? Thank you, uh, well, obviously, the first thing to say on the broader Brexit is that the uh, discussions in Brussels are ongoing and the European Council is the uh, appropriate place to deal uh, with all of the issues which are arising for the whole of Europe and, of course, particular uh, relevance uh, for Ireland, given our very close relationship uh, with the UK. And there will be statements here in the House uh, next week on the outcome of the European uh, Council. Um, there's a long way to go. Uh, many issues uh, on the table and clearly the position of the Irish government has, to, has been to say that the United Kingdom uh, needs space uh, before it can uh, be expected to formally begin the process. Um, as far as um, our approach to neutrality uh, is concerned, Deputy, there's been absolutely no change uh, in, the in the current government in relation to that. Uh, we remain committed to the triple lock process in relation to any engagement uh, which uh, our defence forces have. That remains absolutely in place. We've already made clear our uh, commitment as a government to the partnership uh, for peace and engagement around that. Our armed forces have a, a very proud tradition of engaging in peacekeeping around the world. We intend to continue that. Our troops are currently in, in, in a number of countries around the world where they are continuing in that tradition. And the intention is to continue to do that and to continue to uphold that tradition uh, in this country. That's the approach of the government. Uh, nothing has changed. Uh, Brexit doesn't change that as far as the Irish government are concerned. We remain committed uh, to the situation as I have outlined as far as neutrality is concerned. Deputy Pringle, one minute. Unfortunately, um, you didn't address the question in relation to why, uh, whether the Taoiseach participated in the European Council with the, in the presence of the Secretary General of NATO, which I think is very key um, for a, so, a so-called neutral country. And you reiterated the government's response that the triple, triple lock mechanism is what governs our participation in, in any military ex exercise. But Tarnish, the previous government watered down the triple lock through the Defence Amendment Act in 2006, um, to so much so that a senior foreign affairs official has been quoted as saying that all that is needed at this stage is a benediction from the UN for Ireland to enter into a war. 
So that is, the, that is the strength that the triple lock system actually has at this stage. And as far as, I, as far as I'm aware, I think the invasion of Afghanistan didn't have a UN uh, mandate. It was mandated by the UN Security Council, which as we know was dominated by the Americans and, and the French and the British, but it, was, it wasn't, wasn't sanctioned by the actual U, total body of the UN itself. So the question again, Tony, so maybe you could answer it with one word, is whether the Taoiseach actually participated in the European Council with the, the Secretary General. Of, of NATO, or whether he removed himself for that part of the discussion. Thank you, Deputy Pringle. Tanish, one minute to uh, conclude. Deputy, regardless of who attended or didn't attend uh, particular meetings, uh, the situation is, as I've outlined to you, uh, clearly the government, uh, uh, the Dáil, uh, and there has to be, obviously, a UN resolution before we are involved in, in any particular initiative. Uh, that r r remains the case. Um, that hasn't changed. Uh, that legislation you referred to did not change that. Um, the triple lock situation remains, and we continue to participate uh, primarily, of course, in partnership for peace and the peacekeeping uh, efforts that are being made uh, around the world. And our defence forces uh, will continue uh, to be engaged in peacekeeping uh, based on that. Uh, the, the precedents that are there for every engagement that we've had uh, where the uh, triple lock has, uh, has characterised our approach and it continues uh, to characterise it uh, irrespective of who attends what meetings. That's the clear position of the Irish government in relation to neutrality. I don't have details who attended at that particular meeting but as I say uh, the key issue here at stake here um, is the approach of the government to neutrality and that has not changed.